Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Realistically, a show where we deconstruct the current events of the week for you. Mm -hmm. Hello. Hello. So um, let's see. Um, Lennon's birthday is in two days, so I'm going to uh, trans definitely translate um, an interview with uh, Mikhail Vasiliev. He's a professor. He's wrote over 375 books. Um, he, uh, I have all his, uh, many of his books, and yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be fun um, because uh, I mean, it's it's a good. Uh, he has very deep experience. He was in the Soviet, he was right before the Soviet Union broke up, uh, before they destroyed it. He gave like one of the most outstanding speeches um, in front of the Duma, and yeah, cool. That'll be cool. So we'll put that out in a couple of days when it's done. Um, yeah, and what what else is going on? Yeah, well, um, unfortunately, um, Russell Bentley, um, he was an American who fought um, uh, in the Vastochny Battalion, which is the Russian, um, the DNR Battalion, the good side, the not Nazi side. Um, it's kind of rare to see Americans in the not Nazi side. <laughs> unfortunately, he died. Um, he went. He was in somewhere near Adyevka, and he he went missing around April 8th, but then it seems like they found their, his body yesterday. It seems like him. It has his clothing, but they can't identify his face, so they're going to do genetic testing to be sure. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's tough. Yeah. He's the one who says, with Lenin and God, with Jesus and Lenin on our side, we will win. Yeah. 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 <laughs> So, so he was a very religious Christian and he went to like Dunbas in 2014 to give some aid, like some basic products like food, food, uh, heat uh, and things like that. And then um, uh, he, he really liked it there and he stayed there. He got married. Um, he had children. Um, I think he had children. Maybe he didn't. I don't know about the children. Yeah. <laughs> um. And then uh, he, uh, yeah, uh, so he, I guess he died the way he wanted to die. Yeah, he died a revolutionary. In, so he, he yeah. For the people, so that's, that's yeah. That. Did you, did you, uh, you heard about the self immolation yesterday, right? Yes, I did. So that is, um, was in front of the courthouse. And he wrote a long manifesto, but it seems like they've taken the manifesto off the internet. Um, and he's talking about the upcoming fascism, which is not entirely false. Um, I forgot his, uh, Azalea, maybe his name, uh, Mark yeah. Azalea. Yeah, um, I, I did get a chance to read the manifesto. It was a little, you know, it was a little because he's like, oh, you guys are all going to think I'm a conspiracy theorist. And um, he I mean, he had a lot right, but not in the right sense, like um <laughs> You know, he had he had some weird like he thinks that there's like the you know the whole you know that it's being done behind like in, evilly like in you know in the dark. No, the it's okay. just happening. It, it is happening, and if you just pay attention, you can see how you know the fascism is playing out. Like it's 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 not so much hidden as he thought it was, and and he he did say at the end of it that they took his laptop. That had all the proof on it. Um, and uh, the FBI and the CIA, um, you know, the alphabet groups. And uh -huh. um, I think he said the FBI took it. And then, um, but he did, he, he was making a weird claim about the writers from The Simpsons, was the weird part. Um, so the writers of The Simpsons all went to Harvard and they keep predicting things. And that's why, like, this is proof of the conspiracy that there's. Oh, no. Oh. no, no. Simpsons did accidentally predict 9 11, though. Um, but it's not proof of a conspiracy. It's just a. Yeah. Like yeah. they run so many episodes of Simpsons that once in a while they're going to predict. It's like Alex yeah. Jones predicting 9 11. He predicts thousands of conspiracy theories. Um, and he got 9 11 right a few months beforehand because, I mean, if you're going to say lizard people, uh, globalist, FEMA camp, whatever. Um, and you add it, it, it's like, what is it? It's like when it, 
it's like when a stopped clock tells the right time twice a day. Yeah. yeah. The weird thing about this, though, is that, like, I found weird is that it happened and it happened in front of all the media, like, like that. So CNN was like, you know, they they were report. They thought it was uh, uh, shots. They thought it was a gun thing happening at first, and then they realized someone's on fire, and and the report is sitting there like talking about it. And there's a guy behind her that obviously was <laughs> CNN too that's like saying stuff, and they're all kind of like shocked, looking on at this because it's happening in front of them. But they didn't. They knew the name. Like Newsweek then put out the name and the manifesto because that's I guess he dropped a whole bunch of pamphlets, and those were all the manifestos. Like he had printed a whole bunch of them. Mm -hmm. So Newsweek had that up, but they didn't have his LinkedIn. Like his socials were still up. Like, you know, like they immediately go in and take down socials like really quickly. Yeah. And they were up for a little bit after this. It was just kind of weird. Interesting. Yeah. So, I mean, the, I mean, the, the dude yeah. had some of it right i mean he, he understood that it wasn't you know trump and biden are both the fascism like he he, mm -hmm. he was you know basically pointing at the system but he's also under the belief that it's being run by you know it secretly which is not it's just out there like <laughs> just pay attention people the fascist yeah. is happening daily so, <laughs> so. um uh, okay, so um, can you just make sure we're broadcasting? Oh, yeah, why is it? Are we broadcasting? Um, we should be, but I don't know. Hold on. Okay, because I see that we're... I see people who... Yes, they say yes. Okay, uh, I'll say a word. Um, Columbia. And type it so we are broadcasting but we can't see it yeah. well I, yeah i have it over here i'm seeing it it I, I don't know. Know, it's been weird um that i did a stream last night that youtube was doing this kind of weird like it would stop it on my end if i was watching on my phone too so yeah yeah like i was checking on my phone to see if we're broadcasting and i can't see the broadcast usually i can see the broadcast with a small delay yeah no, it's playing on my phone now, so it was just excellent. Okay, uh, okay, it doesn't matter then if I can't see it, and now I can see it. Okay, excellent. And they type, okay, okay. <laughs> okay, excellent. Okay, sorry about that. It was just weird that we can't broadcast. Um. Yeah. So let's. Oh, I was. Did he die? Yes. He, so okay. um, they didn't announce it until like later last night that he passed away. But I like. People were saying, like, I, I didn't look closely, but there was no way he was going to survive by the time that they put the fire out and stuff like that. He was already, like, that that whole, you know what I mean, how they... Yeah. This is the third this year. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, the, I, a, I thought it was the fifth ahead. one. Someone said there's been five. Maybe there. this is the third I know of. Um, because yeah, there was a... There was one in December. Um, yes. Yeah, and and I I just I quickly heard someone I think it was like Savvy Sabs or someone like I was just flipping through Twitter and someone said it was the fifth one, but I didn't okay. know. Okay. Do. Um, oh, he's downtown. Matt is downtown, so he's gonna be late. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> Um, so, so yeah, uh, it, it, I, I, I mean, it, it, it's, it, it's weird which ones make it to international or national, like Aaron Bushnell's made a big impact. This made a nuts, but probably because Aaron Bushnell's message was very clear. It was just one sentence pre Palestine. Yeah. I mean, they would have hit, hit, hit this one too. He just went there because he knew all the media would be there because of yeah. the trial. So um, and then everyone was assuming that he was doing it for Trump or something. And, and no, that wasn't it. His sign said Trump and Biden, like a fascist coup, like together. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. So like, he's, uh, yeah, yeah. So it seems like he had some things right, but not others. Um, and um, I, it's amazing how many people just jumped in, mentally ill, mentally ill. It's like, you're not a psychiatrist. Don't diagnose. No. And he even wrote it like, 
he wrote the stuff like, you know, like a revolutionary suicide. Like he wrote it in the fact that he was doing this um, <clears throat> in the name of, you know what I mean? To like yeah. highlight this. So, you know, it's, it's not the same thing as, as having a suicidal ideation, I guess. I, I, you know what I mean? Like it's, yeah. It's, you, you get to a different point of it and you're putting yourself on the line for, um, for a cause, you know, but you know, I, this, he, you know, he was, he wasn't entirely off on what he was saying or the fact that he wasn't viewing it dialectically. He wasn't like, he wasn't like taking into account that, no, it, it's not that it's hidden. It, it's out there. Like, they're just openly doing it. It's it's not a yeah. thing going on. So yep, that's correct. Um, so um, so let's get to our first story. All right, you want to go? You want to drop the link in the chat? So there's a lot of news to cover this week. All right, so let me get into this so I can move it. So we're gonna um, do the article first, right? Sure. Okay. Okay, so okay. Um, can you send me the? Oh, I, I already have the link. Let me uh, so that um, we can. We're not going to read the whole article, but it, but we're going to uh, um, summarize. Um, Columbia student protests. Um, so there's okay. So this week, the Columbia president um was testifying in Congress. Former CIA agent. Um, what's her name? Ella Elsa Ellis. She's a congresswoman from Michigan. Yeah, um, I don't know who you're talking about, actually. Um, Elise Stepanek? Oh, Stepanek, yeah. Stepanek. Stephanie. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, oh, yeah. Uh, she was a former CIA agent. She threw some, uh, Stepanek, um, uh, she, um, uh, uh, um, she, so she was questioning the pre president of um, Colombia and she basically had an agenda, which is to show that there are there's a rise of um, anti-Semitism, and she actually accused um, um, of, of there being pro-terrorist professors and warning that um, uh, she, like this is what she literally said: a reminder to President Shafiq that knowingly misleading Congress is a felony, and um, that there has been no, uh, despite for Colombia President. Um, you know, it's Shafiq's testimony. There has been no action to fire or discipline pro-terrorist and anti-faculty, anti-Semitic faculty chair, Professor Joseph Massad. That's BS. Um, he is pro-Palestinian. He's a he, he teaches about Palestine, Palestinian society, and things like that. Um, so, um, uh, so this is what I call what New York Times is doing is, of course. Um, truth laundering, uh, well, not truth, leak laundering on behalf of some Israeli group. Um, and um, and Ilhan Omar's questions were actually really on point. Um, so, um, so, but then um, after the congressional, he, Ilhan Omar asked, um, so have there been any uh, anti-Semitic slogans? No. Have they said they hate? No. What have they done? They're like, free Palestine. And so she shut, shut down the stupidity uh, very well. But yeah. in retaliation, her daughter, I, uh, what's her daughter? Yeah, Hersey, I, I know his, her last name got, got um, kicked out. Um, but okay. So, but then um, she called the police uh, to arrest um, some hundred students and take down their encampment. But then that actually backfired because now I hear that there is a protest, equivalent protest at Harvard and Yale. Um, yeah. And um, and now, um, according to this article, pro-Palestinian coalition of faculty staff at Columbia, Barnard, and teachers' colleges called upon faculty to boycott graduation and academic events until the university lifts student suspensions and withdraw financial support from Israel, among um, other demands. Um, so. Um, but yeah, the, so so talk about the uh, anti-Semitic. Did you see in the House? It only passed the House so far. That oh yeah. Um. So they tried to declare that a river to, from the river to the sea is anti-Semitism, yeah. and uh, overwhelming number of Republicans and a large number of Demo Dem Democrats. I think forty-eight Democrats voted against it. 
Um, but they voted to pass this resolution, and I hope it doesn't make it to the Senate because it's just, just idiotic. Yeah, yeah, no, it's 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 ridiculous that uh, um, uh, someone was saying like they were joking like about you know the United States does you know see the shining sea you know <laughs> yeah uh, that's basically see the shining sea is actually genocidal yeah so. I mean, it, it, it's like brags about genocide. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, because the original uh, territory was supposed to be east of the Mississippi, and that's it. Yeah, yeah, they, they were they were not supposed to go any further, but they decided yeah. to do it. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, so it's projection and idiocy, and um, it's also like they understand that the public opinion is overwhelmingly against them. Like, even they've like. It's like it's not a Republican Democrat issue. It's an age issue. So for people under uh, forty or something like that, it's overwhelmingly pro-Palestinian. Um, people who are older uh, get to be more pro-Israel because they watch uh, propaganda. They watch CNN or MSNBC more, uh, Fox News, and they don't understand the the whole depth of the issue or anything about colonialism. So it seems like it's more of an age issue, and that is creating panic. So that's why they're all very um, worried about TikTok or whatnot. And it's not about TikTok. It's about people. Once you access information and you have a heart and you're a human being, you're not going to approve of genocide. Yeah. I can tell you it's not about TikTok because things about Palestine get taken down all the time. The oh, reason yeah. why they're going after TikTok is they want to know the algorithm because they want to totally take it down. Like they don't they don't want that crap to get it. But but you know, people just keep creating more and more content. And it they have enough power over it to take things down right away and not give you an answer why they're taking them down. It's just that they can't stop the algorithm from people, you know, those things getting pushed out more and more. And yeah. that's worried about is that people are seeing it like on twitter at least they suppress everyone so <laughs> you know well, i'm not enough i mean twitter they see we see a lot too yeah yeah but yeah but it, yeah it, it has nothing to do like it has nothing to do with um that tiktok is any more getting more of the information out than any other place is just no happening. but in tiktok you can see the okay so for example israeli soldiers like raid people's underwear whoa yeah last week i read i saw a video where one israeli under uh, uh soldier wears the underwear he oh that, that was so gross so weird They're, yeah and they put it that themselves up that that up on tiktok so it's not like um you need to when, when you see this people are like ew that's disgusting and yeah and that's basically, yeah. and, and it's not even pro-Palestinian. Israeli soldiers are filming themselves doing this. So then when you see the other footage, it's um, it's just disgusting. Yeah. It's the same thing you see in, like, Ukrainian soldiers putting up, like... Nazi salute. Yeah. And, and, and you see it, and you're like, okay, that's not helping your cause. <laughs> no, not but, at all. Speaking of that, <laughs> let's show the latest Ukrainian... Um, Recruiting video, it's hilarious. Give me one second. Yeah. Got it. Oh. This gets all. Yeah, this uh, video is very, yeah. I mean, if you thought that they were, that the, there weren't Nazis, okay. Hello? I went into screensaver. What did, what did I do? I went into screensaver. Oh, you went into screensaver? Yeah. I but it know. didn't affect the broadcast. Okay. So let me, uh, I have to start it again. <laughs> Mana, третя група. Mana, studentski. Це найважчий гріх, і він охороняє. Я доглядаю за вакуси. А я що? А хай спочатку депутати йдуть. І їхні діти. Розумієте? Послухайте, я не фізична особа. 
Я людина. Людина я. Кругом. Ну что, бойцы, на Берлин? So basically, they're saying if you don't fight against Russia, Russia will come and force you and liberate Berlin, which is um, obviously a reference to 1945. <laughs> like it's a bad thing. Yeah, it's 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 just amazing that they use Berlin. Like they could use anywhere else. <laughs> yeah, they use Berlin. Like they could say, "Oh, we're going to France or something." Like, like yeah. You know, at least take the route that the um, that the Nazis took, but no, they they're more worried about the route that the Red Army took than, <laughs> yeah. than what the Nazis did. Mm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like, oh no, not to Berlin. <laughs> <laughs> So funny. Yeah, which I mean, it, it shows you how they're failing uh, at recruiting efforts, and um, um, and also the how the Nazi ideology has penetrated deep within the uh, within whoever is doing this commercial. It, it's just, I mean, it's it's a mate. It's like we're saying, like they don't hide it. They don't hide it at all, and it's the U.S. that sits there and has to hide it. It's the yeah. Same Israel, like everything that Israel does, the U.S. is trying to hide it. You know what I mean? Like when they, oh yeah, the, the worst is like um when they publicly send weapons and then Biden secretly, fakely leaks. I'm upset with BB for being too yeah. harsh with the weapons. Yeah, I, I was I was looking through stuff this morning and I came across it was an article from February and it was like, is Blinken too nice to be Secretary of State? No, he's too incompetent, and he's a bloody idiot. He's too nice, though. It's, no, he's not. He's, he's just an idiot. Nice, <laughs> he he just does not have the basic grasp of anything. Like, um, I'm, I'm sorry to, I feel even horrible saying this. Like, Henry Kissinger was a horrible, but at least he knew, he, he knew basics. Yeah, I mean, and he, and and he looked at things like he was even, you know, later in his life, he was saying, wasn't it since like, wh when was it like in the 90s or early 2000s when he was first saying like not to go into Ukraine or leave Ukraine? Yeah, you know, he, 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 yeah, I started questioning myself like, oh, first he was like, yeah, we need to be less belligerent with North Korea. And he said Trump is good, is right to talk to the young man from Korea. Like he forgot his name, but I, I was like, yeah. wait a minute. Uh, I have to read, uh, but, but he, he he started saying some, yeah, uh, some practical things. Um, I don't know why, um, but yeah, um, I was surprised. But Blinken is just a bloody idiot. Like there's no, uh, there's no ifs and ifs, ends ifs and buts. He just does not have. He has not read enough briefings, basically. No, he's 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 a complete dope. But I mean, it, 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 but. The whole thing is, is he too nice? No, he's not too nice. He's allowing a friggin' genocide to go on. How oh, is yeah. That, like, even calling someone he's too nice. He's not. He's not. He's not. not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's not. I mean, he's not even. Uh, and it's, he's not being nice when he looks like a deer in headlights all the time. Yeah. Yeah. It's, so it's just being incompetent. Uh, yeah, he's. Um, yeah, he, his new thing is he's claiming that the, the Houthis are blocking aid to Palestine. It's the Houthis. Blocking. No, they're not. Um, they're allowing, that's the only thing they're not blocking. They are blocking everyone, what? everyone connected to Israel. No, the, but he, what he's trying to do is say, oh, but our ships have aid on it that they're blocking. Uh, yeah. They, and then they don't, they're all stuff to go to Israel and they're all and, weapons probably. Um, yeah. yeah. And, and, um, it's funny that they can't, um, that 
it also Houthis also exposed the weakness of the U.S. Um, soft and hard power because Houthis. I mean, so the U.S. basically has fought every war against like illiterate peasants in their flip flops, um, mm -hmm. like against malnourished Pashtuns in Afghanistan, um, just um, ordinary people in Iraq. Like they're not used to even handling like a minorly organized army and navy like the Houthis. Yeah. So it just exposes the weak, soft weakness of both soft and hard power in the U.S. And yeah. of course, the U.S. could have negotiated something if they had a good faith effort um, instead of their pitiful thing where they're like, oh, we're going to remove sanctions if you let our ships in with the Houthis. Like that was just pitiful. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's they could have negotiated uh, if they wanted to, like something like we'll stop bombing you. And these are the things we will ship to you in exchange for letting our ships pass or whatever and i bet you they would have probably agreed to something oh yeah yeah I, i'm sure they, I mean, they but if you're gonna put them on a terrorist list you can't actually negotiate with them as a state and and have diplomatic relations which is idiotic because they are the government in yemen <laughs> no matter how much you don't uh, how much like yeah the u.s recognizes some dude in saudi arabia um who's the juan guaido hadi but you can't negotiate with him. I mean, even they know you can't. He's not the, he's not the real government. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Exactly. It reminds me of the time when uh, Trump declared Juan Guaido president. And then when um, the Venezuelan fishermen caught the U.S. spies, um, they had to, uh, like, uh, Trump kind of had to, uh, uh, like, negotiate with Maduro. And it's like, yeah, he's the president. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you want to go into the... Um... Israel stuff, or do you want to wait a little bit for Matt and stuff? We can do either Israel or Argentina, um, whatever we want, whatever is easier for you. Um, well, let's let's do Argentina because that's a small. Okay. Like, that's the okay. So let me. Okay, so Javier Milieu is like totally nuts. Um, he's the libertarian president of um, Argentina who. Uh, who wants to like basically turn Argent get rid of Argentina's monetary sovereignty, destroy, uh, engage in austerity, just like destroy Argentina in every possible way? And I see things going for him much worse than um, things go have gone for Bolsonaro. Um, it's not going. I don't even think he's going to finish a term. Yeah. So this is your mm -hmm. article: Argentina requests to join NATO as president. Malay seeks to boost nation's global prominence. Yeah. Deputy Secretary General Mircea Guiona met Argentine um, Defense Minister Luis Petri at NATO headquarters on Thursday. NATO stands for North Atlantic Treaty Organization. Mm -hmm. Argentina is very clear in the Southern Hemisphere. For talks on working for a partnership between the alliance and Argentina, it's a great pleasure to welcome Defense Minister Petri to NATO headquarters, said Mr. Geona. Argentina plays an important role in Latin America, and I welcome uh, today's request to explore becoming a NATO partner. Um, and um, NATO works with a range of countries around the world to promote, um, the, they don't promote peace and stability, they do the opposite. The two leaders exchange views on European and Latin security challenges. The Deputy Secretary General welcomed Argentina's role in supporting Ukraine, with life-saving humanitarian assistance, including food, medicine, and support for refugees. So it looks like Argentina is doing a paper clip, Operation Paperclip again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so many Nazis found refuge in Argentina. But luckily, in Argentina was not a safe space for them. So Argentina accepted them, but they're like, uh, we're not going to do anything to protect you. So it was like a free-for-all. It's like somebody went and shot them. Uh, I, I read this book, Two Bullets, for Ante Pavlich. This man who has no permission from Yugoslavia or anything goes and just he's upset because he he's like saving these two bullets for Ante Pavlich, his last two bullets. And then he goes and shoots him. And then the Argentina uh, police don't even like check to see he has diplomat diplomatic immunity. They just write he diplomatic immunity he was sent by Tito. And then that's it. Um, and they don't arrest him. Um, I mean, it's not like anyone's crying over Ante Pavlich, but it's funny that... Um, of how little uh, they cared. So then a lot of the Nazis who were in Argentina, like Mingala, uh, and, and then they let the Eichmann thing happen. Um, it was actually contrary to the popular belief, Argentinian police figured it out and they was, uh, was like, 
you guys want him? Um, yeah, we don't really care if you do. And so they kind of like whistled the wrong, whistled the other way while they were like, hoo, 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 well, Israel came and took him out. <laughs> yep. Um, Teresa is saying that she was in um, Argentina in January, supplies from Raytheon et al. to Policia already. So the police are highly um, armed <laughs> by U.S. <laughs> military. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's sad, um, but not unexpected. But I, I've i seen the protests with the people. Um, I just, and it's where Trey was born, so I have faith in Argentina. <laughs> Ability to strike back. Because, yeah, uh, uh, and Argentina has a very good revolutionary culture, so I have faith is what I'm going to say. Yeah, yeah. So hopefully, but like, I, so like, what like with with the melee like are, are they protesting him like heavily now yeah or? so first he tried to enact uh, okay first he tried to enact some kind of fees for colleges and people were like no then he tried to increase um, uh, incre enact austerity and increase uh, uh, prices for public transportation yeah. there were huge protests for that um and then he tried to lower the salary of government workers that was met with protest um, like uh, by millions. So uh, none of his um, libertarian uh, things are working out as he wants to, but he has still cut, done some austerity, um, done some deals with the US, um, ruined Argentina's economy and um, increased the poverty. He, he's not that different from Macri from a few years ago, but Macri was not a clown. He was, a yeah. he spoke decently. And so it, Malay is a clown, um, so it makes it more visible. Yeah, like a, what was he? He was up in the U.S. like a month ago, right? And he goes and see Trump. He, you know, he goes and hooks up with Trump and stuff. <laughs> it's just yeah, uh, it's ridiculous. Yeah, but, and um, then um, so um, so that's the deal with Argentina. Um, I don't think, I mean, there are like, I don't think they'll do anything much more than um, like, it's not like they're gonna um, have, uh, um, oh, okay. But so um, see, they're not gonna, I mean, they're not gonna be members of NATO anytime soon, but it just shows you the direction that Malay is taking the country. And as more and more countries are turning pink or red um, in Latin America, he's going the opposite. Um, so there's Gustavo Petro in Colombia, Lula, um, who else? Um, Is there any other, um, what are in the, so he wants to join NATO, so is it Brazil, who, who else is in BRICS? Brazil? Is there India, any other? Russia, Brazil, South India, Africa. Russia, Iran, China, and South Africa. All right, so no other Latin Americans no. yet. There's no. a bunch that want want to go though, right? There, there are many countries that want to go, yes. Yeah, yeah. So so then this having Argentina go to the North Atlantic. Um, <laughs> that's, that's like that's not where things are happening. Um you can't really do anything without Brazil, Russia, and I mean that's uh, there are big population mm -hmm. centers. India and China without India and China, you're nothing, basically. Yeah. 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 I mean, what is India and China is over a third of the world, right? Population. Um, yeah, India and China is over a third of the world. Um, so it's about, they make up about 3 million of the 7 billion, almost a half of the world. Yeah, almost, but they're about, yeah, but just over like a third, I guess, or close to that. So like, I, I, I don't know, American exceptionalism is so <laughs> amazing. Yeah. That, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and NATO is getting going to it has to get weaker and weaker because um, NATO's only power source is from the US and it's not like anyone's like yay I want to go and die for Latvia for like Joe Biden said we will defend every and once he made a video about how he's going to defend an inch of Latvia and it's like yay who can you name an American who wants to go and die for an inch of Latvia I don't think or, I don't any think Latvian, I an American that knows what Latvia is. Okay, I don't even see Latvians going to defend it. Like, it's stupid. I mean, it's not like, so that's the ridiculous Article 5 in NATO. Yeah. 
Yeah. And um, so it seems like it's not like there's an uh, there. It's not like so uh, BRICS primarily is an economic alliance where they have treaties on trade and de-dollarization conferences and whatnot. It's, and um, NATO is a military alliance. And um, yeah, it's not no one's going to. Yes, it's, it, it's not it, it's going to fade sooner or later. So BRICS is more like economic and and NATO would be more like political in, in a sense, like. Yeah, and it's not people, I mean, do you want US bases in your country? Do you want to, per, are you, do you want to be forced to purchase Raytheon weapons that are subpar, that probably don't work as we've seen in the Iron Dome? <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so, I don't know, did, oh, did I, did you want to go through that article or? I already did. I did. Okay. <laughs> What's going on here. All right, let me get that. I, I mean, I'm not reading the article word for word. I'm going through the major uh, points. Yeah, no, that's fine. That's. <laughs> I don't know if I showed it on screen though. I. I... I it doesn't matter if we don't don't show it on screen. Okay. All right. So we're done with that. We're done with that. So we're then. Israel and Iran. Um, so uh, Israel on April 1st attacked the Iranian consulate in Syria in Damascus. Mm -hmm. And then um, Iran retaliated last week. Yes. And they attacked only military bases. And it shows you that you can do it without attacking civilians and bombing the whole country. Mm -hmm. They were very accurate, targeted. And at first they said Isra uh, Israel blocked 99% of the missiles, but it yeah. wasn't 99%. It doesn't matter. Like, and then I read Times of Israel said fifty percent, um, and then Israeli officials are all over the place. Some say ninety nine, some say say ten percent, some say fifteen. It is, so, but it, that doesn't matter. Um, yeah. Even allowing, depending on what where the missile hits, like a uh, five or six missiles can do a lot of damage. But it was but, also proof that they could do it. Like, we can do it. You know what I mean? Like, we can we can actually get through your stupid iron dome. So. La -da. <laughs> yeah, and so what that did was make Israel scared um, because um, it, it's not just Iran. If Iran can get through, so can the Houthis, so can um, Hezbollah. And they're actually scared of Hezbollah because Hezbollah has successfully defeated them in the past and, like, um, uh, and kicked them out of the, the occupying area in Lebanon. And so they can do that too. Um, and they're much closer to home and they can't really war with have war on forefront especially with hezbollah even though there but, are strikes and didn't, whatnot didn't hezbollah like um shoot a whole bunch the night before iran or right before iran attacked like they were they were shooting at the iron dome and we were yeah. kind of assuming like were they trying to weaken it for iran no or? i think they were testing where the weakness lies yeah, yeah. So that the and the Iron Dome is meant for like small uh, range missiles, like that, like Hamas has, not actual militaries like Hezbollah yeah. or Houthis or Iran, especially not some, as big as Iran. Um, so therein lies the weakness there. Um, and it is, it's like um, what it does. And the Iron Dome, I've read the specifications. Even they don't actually try to get uh, fight off all missiles. Yeah. The Iron like calculates and sees if this missile is worth fighting um because it and based on where it would land and then they fire a second projectile to intercept the missile in the air if mm -hmm. they determine that this missile is um gonna hit someplace important basically yeah uh. so the iron dome itself does not try to block 99 percent of the missiles they only block some important like if it's gonna hit somewhere in the forest or like some place where they don't care or, yeah. some, or apartment buildings, <laughs> I guess it's places they don't care. Yeah, um, like the U.S. and supposedly U.S. and U.K. were up in the air shooting down missiles too and something. Yeah, and Jordan helped too, and he's getting protested big time. Um, there's all, all these uh, um, hashtags in Arabic calling him the uh, Dwarf King. Um, in English, they call him the Hobbit King. Um, and he is uh, getting uh, really protested against big time um, nonstop protests. I put up a blurry picture and got 3,000 retweets. But yeah, the, the Jordanians came and said, we're sorry, Gaza. Um, our king does not represent us, which is very dangerous for a king because um, 
usually they go in the way of Tsar Nikolai when that happens. Yes, and his his queen Rania, 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 Rania is Palestinian. Oh. She, yeah, she was born in Kuwait, but her parents were Palestinian. Yeah, um, that's embarrassing that she hasn't left him yet. Mm hmm. Um, and so Israel, um, and so first, the really weird part is that Biden, um, uh, uh, Biden basically tried to call I I I Iran and said, Psst, Iran, can you let Israel kind of hit a, an, an important place as like a face saving uh, mechanism? And Iran was like, no, that's ridiculous. No, we won't. So then Israel decided to, um, to Israel uh, carried out, so on Friday, Israel carried out strikes on uh, Iran. And um, according to the news agency in Iran, um, it, that there were some explosions heard over the skies in Is Isfahan, yeah. Iran. Um, and that um, then, then they also report that um, it activated their uh, dr automatic drones and they shot down a lot of um, missiles over the city of Isfahan. Yeah. And um, so it didn't look like it targeted anything. Um, and um, Except for there's a nuclear plant in that area, right? So that would have been very dangerous, but it looks like it didn't land, thank God. Yeah, yeah. So that's um, why... Yeah, Iran was probably keen on shooting the, that one down if they were going to target like the other nuclear plant. I'm sure. Um, yeah. I like, well, I, I ran like so like in the media is like Iran is just downplaying this. No, Iran. I think Iran's just like yeah, that was nothing. Like <laughs> no, I mean their missiles were able to shoot it down, and it seems like it didn't land on any intended targets, and it seems like Israel didn't have a goal like. Iran had a very goal. This is the our Navy our Air Force base we want, and this is the hangar, and this is why we want it, and that's why they hit it, and it caused some damage. Israel was like, "Oh, we wanted to strike back," and they didn't have yeah. that goal of what they wanted to disarm or what they. Yeah. So they're a child. They're they're like a a mean, angry child, and they're just lashing out. Yeah, they were just wanting to show that they're superior air power, but it seems like. They don't. they don't have that. <laughs> like Iran proved a point and Israel just is well, trying to show off. Um, like, yeah. Um, Final Force is bringing up that Scott Ritter's breakdown on the missiles technology and Iron Dome strategy is top notch. So if. Uh, yeah, it's really good. Um, But basically the Iron Dome itself is not designed to take out everything. Yeah. Uh, so it's like they have these little things in little trucks that are around and they point and they, they're done automatically by a computer and it just shoots it down if they deem it's, it's going to land in it. Look at the trajectory and it landed in an important place. And um, and it's meant for very short range missiles, like not even like from like things that Hamas might do create in their basements kind of thing, not um, yeah. high technology things. Yeah. And um, I don't know, on, on the Israel stuff too, I had written down about, um, there's a big thing about Blinken, like he's been getting requests from, you know, his staff and other people on Biden's administration to uh, sanction the military un units in Israel um, that are linked to the killing and the raping. And he is not doing anything about it. Like there's, there's been like, people have been telling him to do this and he's doing nothing about it. Oh yeah. And basically they'll leak and say, Plinkins privately is very upset and wishes Phoebe would not do this. That's yeah. Cause he's, he, you know, he's all civility, civility politics. Yes. Yeah, but, but that's so that people who are dumb enough like are gonna be fooled and think, oh, Blinken really wants to, uh, I know. Her, yeah. Well, but the Biden, Biden, Biden told him no, but in the eighties when Reagan said no, they stopped. Like, like you can't tell me like, like I, it, it was always like through all this, everyone's like Israel runs the United States. I'm like, no, no, the United States 
has a hand over Israel. They're just allowing it. Like yeah, like like Ronald Reagan in 1980 when they were doing the horrible things in Lebanon actually told them to cut it uh, stop, and they immediately stopped. Yeah. I mean, we're sending the weapons. We don't need to be sending the weapons. If we want them to stop, that's what we would be doing. Well, okay, U.S. can actually has technology in the weapons where they can shut it off. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's true, too. They have all the, yeah, they have all the codes and everything for the, for the weapons to shut them down. Yeah. It's like, I like, people get so, like, they want to just sit there and say, okay, it's not you know, the U.S. is doing all they can. And it's like, and it's both sides that do it. It's, you know, the Biden supporters and the other side supporters, you know, but they're all supporting Israel. So, you know. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a fake thing. Um, Let me change my battery. Okay. All right. Esha and her batteries. <laughs> I should play the theme song right now. <laughs> no. Yep. Back. She's back. See, I changed the battery and came back. I thought so, we lost forever. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Um, and, and yeah, it's not like they're, uh, yeah. And so um, I, I guess now we'll have to see how Iran responds. My guess is Iran, hopefully Iran, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Iran basically said after what happened, they said, Okay, that, like that's it. If you do one more, then forget it. Like that. Yeah. Like, you try. You tried. Oh, good on you. Now you try again, and that's you've crossed the line. Exactly. That's what Iran is doing. Um, and so we'll have to see. Yeah. With um, what happens, but you know, meanwhile, Israel still. What is going on within Gaza? Have you heard much? I haven't. Yeah. Um, so basically, it's the same thing. Um, the, the massacres are continuing. So in Al Shifa Hospital, they found a mass grave, um, and it's um, so Al Shifa uh, is a hospital. They found a, 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 a like, uh, and it, it, so it was occupied by Israeli forces, and they found a mass grave there, and um, they're still identifying the bodies. And um, um, it, 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 it and we just have to wait and see who it is. It seems like it's patients, random Palestinian civilians, whatnot. Um, it happened after Israel occupied the hospital and uh, attacked um, all sorts of people um, and some staff, many staff too. Yeah. And a doctor found a mass grave and they're ex excavating it, and it's going to take a long time because it's been there for a while now. Yeah, yeah, and I and I saw like one picture, but I don't know, because it wasn't really verified, but I saw like the the zip tie around someone that was around. Yeah, that, yeah, I don't know if that was all Shifa, but that definitely is true. Yeah, that they, they're finding, you know, bodies that they're, they're restrained. Like they're restrained, they're, they don't need yeah, to be. Yeah, so they can be like, oh, they're shooting at us. Um, um, they're, um, uh, whatever. Um, so, um, uh, yeah. Um, so basically, um, th that's goes, and then um, so um, in Sheikh Jarrah, which is a suburb in Jerusalem, more Palestinian families have been forced out of their homes by the Israeli court. Yeah. So Israel is continuing this. Um, yeah, because they said like I, I was just because um, like right was it right before Iran struck that they were pulling back out of Gaza, but they. Like, I thought they were pulling back out of Gaza and they were going to, like, bomb the crap out of them is why they were pulling back. But I uh, hear anything like that happening. So. No, they're not pulling back, but they're, um, I don't know what they're doing per se. Besides, they're continuing, but not as badly as they were in November or December. Yeah. And uh, 
I don't know why, uh, what's going on. Maybe they are afraid of Iran. Um, maybe um, they are afraid of the Hezbollah. Uh, I, I can't say. Well, the US will take credit for it if they pull. <laughs> oh yeah, they won't pull out of Gaza just yet. Um, so. I had a man saying they, they pulled out of one part of Gaza. Way back in when? I thought it was just a, like a week and a half ago. Maybe, you're right. Yeah, that they pulled out a part of it, but they were still, I think they were still in Rafa. Oh, yeah, and they're still blockading and, everything. And, of course, they're up north because they, th you know, they basically are claiming the north already. Yeah, they want to relocate Israeli and settler, Israeli settlers over there. So, um, yeah. But then um, I read something about uh, in West Bank, they're continuing with more settlements, of course. Yeah. Oh, uh, speaking. Oh, uh, we also slipped into the DM of Ilan Levy, and I asked him want a debate. What did you ask him? I I just said um, that we wanted to interview you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I first said, do you want? Uh, can we can we do an interview with you? And I had to I had to delete a couple of tweets that I made on him so that he didn't like search what I said. <laughs> <laughs> well, I make fun of him when he's uh, like I added the weight of the trucks for the, uh, for the aid. And it's like, no, people can't eat trucks. Like are these trucks made out of chocolate? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. He was adding all the weight and stuff, but like we, so he had put out a tweet um, saying that he was looking for interviews and stuff like that. Like he, that I can talk on the Israeli stuff now that he's all desperate because they fired him. So um then after I did that, Asha asked him for a debate. So. Yeah. And so well, he hasn't responded to either of us. No. Wimp. <laughs> yeah, total wimp. Wimp. Wimp, wimp. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was, if I do, I was going to ask him about the trucks. Um, I was also going to ask him why he lied so much. Um, what else could I ask him? I send us questions to ask him. Just in case, just in case. I mean, you, yeah. all should, you should all um, tweet him and say, you should debate. <laughs> yeah. But I'm, uh, yeah. We should get this going because he's looking. He's looking for things to do. So, you know, yeah. you all help us. Like, yeah, yeah. Please. Give me questions to ask him. Um, like, why do you not? Why are you um inhuman? Um, why do you lie so much? <laughs> so, Petamelo saying Israel has lost. They haven't achieved anything that they've been looking to do. And I wouldn't say lost because they have killed, uh, they have definitely achieved the murder rate. Like they've killed thousands of people. But I think they, I think the biggest loss that they had is that um, a lot of people, th there's a lot more people who were not paying attention, were just, you know, blindfolded to it, um, you know, have their blinders on, are now seeing it. Like, cause oh, yeah. And then a lot of countries in the world are definitely not, uh, definitely not. Yeah. Uh, more, not more than, much more than is, is supporting this, you know what I okay, mean? Okay, there's like basically two and a half countries that are supporting Israel. Um, And most, <laughs> and, and the European countries are, are kind of being two-faced, a lot of them, because they have a population that they can't, they, they have to be like, okay, yeah, we oppose, like Norway, but then they're not actually doing anything opposed to it. Um, and then there's, uh, well, Spain is actually uh, trying to, uh, honestly trying to recognize Palestine as a nation. Yeah. Oh, and this week, Biden oh. actually called up all the small countries and tried to bully them into not voting for the recognition. And he also, and the U.S. also use use their veto power yeah. to not recognize Palestine as a state. Why the hell? Hello, Kami Trucker. Why the hell does um does the United States get so much power in the UN? Like because it was designed in 1944 when most countries were not countries. Like India was uh, like they were all colonies of Britain and France. And so it basically it was, dis and that's why the, um, uh, basically you get Britain, France and the US having overwhelming power. Mm -hmm. and, it, and if you read George Keenan um, and his manifesto, what, his memoir, memoir, no, no, memorandum, 
he basically explains the whole purpose. It's like, we are 5% of the population, but we hold 60% of the wealth. We need to have the world stay this way, blah, 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 blah. Um, and so, yeah, the UN cannot be taken seriously the current way it is. And um, now people are paying attention to the joke that the UN is, especially the Security Council. And so, um, so I mean, so the General Assembly does the, these resolutions. And so the idea is that if the General Assembly does a resolution that says Israel needs to move out of West Bank, these many settlements, blah, blah, blah then Israel need, needs to do it. Like, And then if they're not doing it, then the UN Security Council gets uh, like a bunch of peacekeeping troops and then goes, hey, go do it. Yeah. But of course, the US has unilateral veto power in the Security right. Council. So yeah. those peacekeeping troops never happen. And so what you have is just um, the um, General Assembly passing resolution after resolution saying, yeah, this is bad, this is bad, this is bad. Um, Israel needs to do X, Y, Z, and Israel never doing X, Y, Z. You know what story we never got to, we haven't gotten to yet? What? Is the title story of this story. Oh, yeah. So we'll do that because we need, we need to have a, we've talked about hard things. So let's have a little break. So how do you know uh, Biden's uncle? Um, what's for dinner? Biden's uncle. <laughs> All right. Hold on. I have to. I have to open it first, sorry. Okay. Cause it, all right, here we go. Let me get this right. Yeah, Biden's uncle is on the menu. On the menu, here he goes. All right, let me just make this bigger, pull this over and. When I left Scranton today, I wanted to go to the War Memorial. When I left Scranton, all right, is that on the screen? Hold on. No, it's not. I know. I I have this all set up weird, and it doesn't go to the screen. I forgot to telegram this. Oh, I, I oh no, somebody did. Ah, uh, no, I didn't. Okay, you ready? Mm -hmm. so I left Scranton today. I wanted to go to the war memorial that has the names of all the Scrantonians who died in World War II, etched into a granite wall, because I wanted to see where my Uncle, Uncle Bo's Ambrose J. Finnegan, where his name was etched. Back in when D-Day occurred and on Sunday, the next day, my mother's four brothers all went down to the recruiting station and joined the military. Every one of them volunteered. And my uncle, they called him Ambrose, they called him Bosey. My Uncle Bosey was a hell of an athlete. They'd tell me when he was a kid and he became an Army Air Corps before the Air Force came along. He flew those single engine planes as reconnaissance over mm -hmm. war zones. And he got shot down in New Guinea and uh, they never found the body because there used to be there a lot of cannibals for real in that part of New Guinea. But one of the things that I, as I was doing that today, I was reminded of what my opponent said in Paris not too long ago. They asked him to go visit American grave sites. He said no, he wouldn't do it because they were all suckers and losers. Oh. I'm not making that up. Staff was how is it today? Suckers and losers. And and undeserved. To have been the commander in chief for my son. Well, Okay, so I actually agree with Trump on this one. Um, it's World War I. Um, and as we know, World War I is a war fought between the imperial powers to get control of the, to see who gets control of the colony. And so I actually agree with Trump. Um, anyone who fought World War I eh, is definitely, uh, uh, like if everyone had followed Lenin and turned their guns on the, their, the real, on their own bourgeoisie, how we would have been living in a different world by now. So I actually agree with Trump on that. Yeah. Um, so there's a there a couple of things on that. Um, uh, the his first uncle was not eaten by cannibals. Um, he was shot down and over the Pacific. Well, not shot down. down. It was engine failure. Over oh, he was water, engine. The 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 the, the um, plane went into the water with four people on it, and it was engine trouble. It wasn't shot down. 
Oh, it wasn't shut down. Okay. And cannibals in Papua New Guinea. And yes, they, they, the law wasn't made until the 1950s that they couldn't do this anymore. Oh, well, but they, no, but they there was so few of them and they only ate their, their own respected dead. respected dead. They would never yeah. have eaten uh, an um, American that was washed up on their shore. Like that <laughs> would have happened. And um, so Ducey was in um, in the briefing with uh, Jean-Pierre, whatever her name is. Um, Karine Jean-Pierre. Yeah. And um, yeah. he's Jean-Pierre. asking her about this. And, and, and she would say, no, this was all about the respect thing. Like Biden what? doing respect to the military where Trump doesn't show respect to the military. Like she, she didn't address the whole... He, he lied like, about everything on the story. Like, yeah, there's nothing even real on that story. And it's racist too. Very racist, extremely racist, and and the like, totally culturally not understanding. I mean, I'm not saying I, you know, I would eat. My it's actually very mom. bad for. They stopped eating because there was these disease called prion diseases. Yeah. And if you eat your own species, it, it it's like a protein that turns your brain, it literally makes your brain look like spaghetti. And so if, if you eat your own species, it's more likely to turn your brain into spaghetti. Yeah. yeah. If you have these wild protein particles. Um, so that's why it's actually dangerous. And that's why they stopped it. Um, yeah. They, had, they got this syndrome called the Kuru syndrome. Um, yeah, and that, that's actually uh, another variant of it is mad cow disease, where people were apparently feeding beef stock or something to beef cattle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So, so he's he's tapping into some like weird racism. Yeah. Always. And this is the same thing. Like I like I think of these these like origin stories that these politicians tell like how elizabeth warren used the whole i'm you know i'm cherokee ancestor because i was that that, that, that makes me so mad i've done an episode about this is that when you read the cherokee constitution she's a lawyer she went to harvard she went to the best law school and she teaches at harvard so she has access to the she knows she can she could have she could have read the charity constitution that says who is cherokee you have to be on the Dawes roll by X mm-hmm. date. And if you're on that roll, you are, and you're a descendant of the direct descendant. If you're a descendant of somebody on that roll, then you're a Cherokee. It's not based on race. It's not based on genetics. That pissed me off so much because she, um, because there were white people and black people who were living there. Um, and Cherokee, of uh, Cherokee people, uh, the Cherokee nation, of course, was not clean. They used slaves and they should be condemned just like white people who use slaves. Um, but there were people of many, uh, it's not based on its genetics. So you you can't, it doesn't say blood. No, actually, I, I don't think there is a single nation, first nation in the United States that uses blood quantum, but I could be wrong. Yeah. As I far as know, most don't, don't. Like most say you have to be a descendant of XYZ for, yeah. on this day. Yeah. Usually it's, it's the, they look at your family roots and stuff like that, or you know, like there's a whole reconnection. Yeah. So, yeah. Or if you've lived uh, in, in this area for so long, or if you speak a language, I mean, there's a, it, it, each nation does their citizenship differently. And um, very, I, I, I have not come across one that uses blood quantum is what no. I will say. No, maybe there is, but I have not come they across don't, And then that's why they don't even, um, a lot of them will not, um, they don't, want people to do dna that because they don't want they don't want that blood quantum thing like they don't want it to they show don't want that race signs. So, so the way they do the dna is they get a whole bunch of samples of people that they believe lived in an area for so long or are part of an ethnic group or something like that and and um so a lot of them won't adhere to doing that i think the the southern american ones are a little bit different but yeah, and, and there are some fake organizations that uh, that are not <laughs> related to the nation of Cherokee that do it, but they're fake organizations. Yeah, yeah. So it's you know, I mean, 
It's it's all ridiculous. But like Biden has some very silly oh, yeah. weird stories. This Irish politician world for word for word about how he grew up on a football field. <laughs> you remember that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then um they showed him like in nineteen eighty it was in nineteen eighty eight, maybe. And it was like, um, what? Uh, yeah, he literally copied this Irish politician word for word. Yeah, yeah that was his his big plea about how he worked in a coal mine and whatnot. And uh, it was yeah. so bizarre. It was it was the same exact story. And then like, but then even his story about being a teenager and being a lifeguard, like corn pop. What? <laughs> like, what is going on here? Like, yeah, why? Well, why do you bring up things? Most people, when they're teenagers, didn't do anything. <laughs> like, he could have just said, when I was a teenager, I went to the movies sometimes on Fridays. Exactly. Exactly. Like he ate some popcorn. But he had, <laughs> ate some popcorn. Didn't, didn't, go, didn't go after the corn pop. Ate some popcorn. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably what really happened, is he ate some popcorn. <laughs> yeah. And that's probably what most people do as teenagers. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. we have some crazy stories, but they're just crazy little stories. They're not like. <laughs> yeah, the corn pop thing was such a bizarre thing, and um, <laughs> and how he like hit somebody with a chain or something. Like, yeah, it was bizarre. Um, and uh, like none of it happened. Um. So Yipper. Um. Yeah, well, well, Ben Carson was also, um, no, but Ben Carson, he was, was a Republican candidate in 2016. He also um, made up this story in high school about how he had to like walk home at, through this like gang territory. Or oh, yeah. But then they asked people in high school and they're like, what? No, he just, his home's there. He just walked over there. Like, right over there. <laughs> yeah. You're yeah. probably asking me if an Irish politician told Biden he should be ashamed. Yeah, there's plenty of Irish politicians that have said that, but and in particular, like Claire Daly and um, Claire Daly is good. Um, yeah, and Mick, um, what's his face? So she was, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, a lot of like they, the Irish people yeah. were protesting didn't want their politicians going to on you know, on St. Patrick's Day going to the United States because they normally do that. And then um, what I guess one did, he ended up, did he resign or get fired yeah. or something when he came back? But he didn't, he wasn't even, he was pretty soft on it, like what he said. He just mm -hmm. kind of, you know, I don't, I don't feel like he was hard on Biden, but he did mention that he should be kind of ashamed, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's... <laughs> Biden. Biden also supported Mandela, don't you remember? <laughs> oh, no, he, he, he went to Robin Island prison. That was so bizarre. And it's like, mm, what? No. Or he, what was the other one? Was he, um, um, he, he was in the march, right? He was, wasn't he? No, no, let me see. Let me just Google that. I, I remember he said something. Okay. No, let me, let me uh, Biden, Mandela. Robin Island. What did he say? Biden ridiculously claims he was arrested in Robin Island for trying. Okay, he says this day 30 years ago, Nelson Mandela walked out of prison and entered into discussions about apartheid. I had the great honor of uh, meeting him. I had the great honor of being arrested with our UN ambassador on the streets of so Soweto to trying to get to see him on Robin Island. Like that never happened. <laughs> Or didn't he like say he walked like a thousand miles or something? Into yeah, his yeah. <laughs> so his stories get outrageous. Like, like, why does he have to make up? Like, I don't get it. Like, the, he could just read the script and be like, I had an uncle who fought in World War II and his plane engine failed and he died. Yeah. So I'm, I, you know, I'm in Scranton. So I'm going to honor him because he's on this Scranton thing. He's on this little plaque in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Yeah. He, so I'm just honoring him. See, I'm honoring military, not calling them losers. Like Except World War One veterans, I will totally call them losers. Yeah. Or Vietnam War veterans, I will call them psychopaths. <laughs> Ears for beers, seriously. Yeah. 
Well, I mean, the only thing the only thing I have to say about those vets is they were dra- a lot of them were drafted. So okay, it's and then, but they okay. didn't have to do ears for beers. No, they no. didn't have to do that. And those they are chose- even the drafty. Well, I don't know some of the draftees. I don't know if they were drafted or who. Well, I saw the winter. I, I, one of my most popular videos is this guy talks about the ears for beers. Yeah, and um, yeah, I don't know whether he was drafted or not, but um, yeah. But yeah, you when you do ears for beers, I'm not gonna. Yeah. No, no, I don't but feel so bad. I I loved it when Trump like it was funny when in 2016 when Trump's like I prefer heroes who don't get captured for McCain, <laughs> and um, the Democrats were all freaking out about it, and everyone like most normal people thought it was funny. Yeah. The Democrats freak out about it. Like the Democrats right now are trying, like this is such a ridiculous thing to me. They're they're putting forth a bill to get um, Trump not to have se- Secret Service anymore. What is that? But like, I don't give a shit if he has Secret Service or not. I don't I really, care like, what, is it, what does it matter? Because those are people that wor- work anyways. I mean, I don't like their freaking job. They're freaking cops and whatever. But they like they're going to just be moved somewhere else. It's not saving us any money. Like we're not spending any more money for, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, they're probably going to move to some other building. Like, and I don't care. And if something happens to Trump, well, if this, this bill's never going to succeed, this is so performative, but yeah, they're not going to remove secret service agent from like the opposing candidate. That's so ridiculous. <laughs> oh, did you see the 702, the um, visa re-up? No. So they re-upped the 702, um, which is, you know, that's the warrantless spying on foreign... Oh, yeah, yeah, Lisa. Yes, I saw that. Um, yeah, yeah. in measures that they can actually do warrantless on American citizens through, like, their communication. You go to Starbucks and... I saw that. I'm sorry. I saw that. I, I just didn't... Um, I heard visa, not visa. Oh, sorry. Not your fault. I just heard I it wrong. Happy today. <laughs> Yeah. And so, and now, like, if you go to Starbucks and you don't use your VPN or if you connect improperly and you see naughty sites, I don't know, like uh, Marxist.org, is that a naughty site? (laughs) Um, They might, like, okay. Well, they might report you to the government. Yep. Yep. And then, like, and and they're like, oh, don't be ridiculous. Like, we can't force someone to report. No, no. Starbucks voluntarily gives your data to them. It's, it's, we didn't say that you'd force them. Or what if, you know, they're saying, oh, the janitor, we're not going to force the janitor. Well, what if you get the janitor on like some weird bogus? You you don't have to. You know, go in and spy for us and then you you won't get prison time for, you know, like. Well, janitors are paid so little, they'll probably do it for like 30 bucks an hour or something. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. yeah, so so yeah, it, it it's just uh, it just shows you like. But what are they going to do with all this data? I feel like they're going to be watching a lot of Taylor Swift. Like I've always wondered, like it, like they're not been like all this spying has not actually been able to stop a single like lone wolf terrorist attack or anything because it's like they it seems like uh so it seems like they're overwhelmed with like Taylor Swift videos or whatever. Yeah, you can't have enough people ca- capturing everything being said. And there's there's people that are making jokes all the time. There's people, you know what I mean? Like, like I I could I could say something, and you know, like it's like I have no ideation of doing it. You know what I mean? Like I'm just saying, yeah. uh, you know, I don't like this person. Blah blah blah. Like they they can capture all that stuff, and what are they? They can't respond to all of it. They can't. You know what I mean? No. Like. I think it's more like they kind of want to see what the pulse is, where the public pulse is, to see how to, like, I don't know, why they're doing yeah, it. Yeah, but squash it. I don't know. Yeah, kind of see, yeah, yeah, um, and, and discredit it. But, uh, uh, like, it's going it, to, it's weird. Um, learn how to use. A, I've been on TikTok. What I've been doing lately is, is trying to get people to understand that fascism isn't, like, this the big ugly things they think it is that it's here and it's like all these little things. With us, 
austerity. Hitler first, I read in my article, Economy of Evil, it first exactly. starts with austerity, lowering wages, getting rid of unions. Then comes the killing of the communists. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, speaking of that, let's look at Florida's new bill. Oh, yeah. Florida's new bill. Hold on. This is this is lovely. Yeah. I have to hit too many buttons now. I, I screwed this up because I made it so it doesn't go right on. This is it. Uh, no, it's fine. I'll start reading. Um, well, I won't read because it's you guys don't want me to read like the whole thing. I'll summarize. <laughs> All right. So here's the, here's the article. It's the Newsweek article. Okay. So Florida prepares students to witness communist indoctrination. There is no communist indoctrination. It's called the truth, mate. So, yeah, Ron DeSantis on Wednesday. Signed um, a legislation designed to enhance states' public education and standards regarding the teaching of communism and prepare students to withstand indoctrination on communism. What? I wish there was indoctrination of communism at colleges and universities. Exactly. So... No. What you get is like a, a annoying ass liberalism. The truth will set us free, DeSantis says. <laughs> the, the truth um, is Marxist. Sorry. I, I mean, I didn't like Franti say something like that. The truth has a Marxist bent. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. The we truth will allow our. Well, go ahead. You read it. We will not allow our student to live in ignorance or be indoctrinated by communist apologists in school. Okay, in that case, Florida students come to us. We will indoctrinate you in communism. Yes. yes. Come come to historically where we yeah. will indoctrinate you. <laughs> Deeply in communism. <laughs> so that you turn into a tanky and you're yeah. like, yay, tanks, Berlin. <laughs> But yeah, so yeah. And so the reason why we brought it up is because who do you call people? Who, what is the main doctrine that's ideologically opposed to communism? Fascism. Exactly. And um, so Florida is. What are they going to do? Like, are, I, 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 but I swear to God, it's going to backfire. I mean, are they going to be like going taking them to victims of communism memorial where you see Himmler, Hitler, and then PA students are real start to are you crap <laughs> what yeah <laughs> he's praying are you know that um it's it's just so funny because it's like they they want you to believe that communism is the bad stuff communism is the anti-fascism anti-fascism is yeah the and communism is the only ideology that has taken billions out of poverty that and sometimes i think communism is a victim of its own success is because when people look at china today they're not thinking China before, like they're not thinking third world country, like people having like all these diseases, everyone being addicted to heroin, opium. Um, the, the, like it, it's just that it so quickly like changes the life of the ordinary person that when you look at equivalent, like equivalent capitalist countries, uh, Cuba versus any of the Pacific islands. Yeah. Um, Cuba was just like all the other Pacific islands before the revolution, but they've moved leaps and bound forward because of communism. Um, I mean, look at Haiti compared to Cuba. Yeah, um, but Haiti was also, I mean, Cuba was also a victim of U.S. imperialism. I mean, like right now, like as of right now, because of, you know, what the capitalists did there, like what the, you know, after the disasters and everything like that. And you know, Yeah, I mean, Cuba has had earthquakes, but they had infrastructure to quickly yeah. fix it. Um, look at Bolivia. Ten year, if, if you look at Bolivia now versus 2004, it would be unrecognizable to you. Mm -hmm. Same yeah. with Venezuela. Um, so it's uh, and those are not even common. Those are socialist yeah. countries. Yeah. Um, so like Bolivia has a path. I mean, Bolivia is a planned country that has a path forward. So does Venezuela. Um, but it, it's still transitioning, and you can see leaps and bounds of difference. And so it's like the only. Um, if you all, if you look at um. So here in the West, what they want to do is like America capitalism, and they won't ever want you to look at capitalist Congo or capitalist India or capitalist um, Burma, Myanmar, 
Uh, Myanmar is actually what is Reagan's wet dream. Like that's basically if the Republicans had their way, your your country would be like Myanmar. Yep, probably. I was uh, but like the like the fascism stuff. Like what what I've been trying to say, like get through to people is like more in the Michael Parenti. Like I, you you have the black shirts and red stuff, but he wrote a piece called you know fascism in a pinstripe suit, where where yeah. it's coming at you like. And you're just accepting it. You're you yeah, like yeah. Will, will Sinclair, um, Upton Sinclair wrote, "It could happen to you," um, mm -hmm. in Vermont. Um, basically, how fascism comes to Vermont. It was it's a really good one. Really. Yeah, yeah, that's that, that, that's awesome. That they that, it's like that's what people don't see. They think that the fascism is, you know, the goose stepping, you know, military military police and stuff like that. And that and they don't even like. And the thing in in America, they don't even care that the Democrats are, you know, supporting this openly, supporting the goose stepping. The, yeah. You know, the, um, but, but it's like, they don't get it. They think it's like one thing. They don't understand that all it is, is supporting corporate, like it's the support of capitalists. Like it's yeah. the corporate, like in, in Italy, the corporations were, you know, they weren't quite an incorporated company we have today but it was like you know a thing over agriculture was the corporation and they have the power over all of our agriculture and exactly everything that hurt the workers and supported the the uh corporation was what was fascism what came across as what we think is uh, yeah. fascism exactly um so basically when, when, when you read my article from I wrote a long time ago um it's fascism is basically Reaganomics on steroids. Basically, it was your article that put me down. Like, I, because you know, I, I read a lot of stuff on the fascism. Yeah. Last year, I read every Michael Parenti book. And uh, okay, well, there's another one. Um, Salvatore Gaetini, um, in, in the acts of under the acts of fascism. That's a good one. Yeah, I, 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 so I read every source that Michael Parenti used. I've been reading. There's only ah, okay. Um, so I just started dot and I'm basically done with it um okay but yeah and so, so and there are very obscure about fascism for obvious reasons <laughs> when you understand it you're like ah, 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 ah. yeah yeah that's why in the u.s they're like so the, the history books are like very vague about what fascism does like mean things <laughs> um yeah um so um, Theo Baker, uh, oh my God, um, he, he's the, the uh, kid who wrote, who's uh, an ep, the, it's funny, on his Wikipedia, it called him a Nepo baby, who got to write, who dox his fellow students in Stanford because they were for pro-Palestine. He went on to criticize the Soviet Union because his dad's friend, Anne Applebaum, who uses Stefan Bandera and the UPA as sources in her book to prove that um, Stalin was oppressive, um, uh, like recommended a book and he was like, oh, it was genocide, blah, blah, blah. And he, everyone just like called him like a Nepo, like there was a lot more accusations of Nepo baby. Um, yeah. And so he's going to have to, um, I hope he grows up because he's still a sophomore and this is just not good for, he needs to learn more about the world before he opines. Yeah, no, definitely. Like it, it's, there's too many people that like I, I I do hear like I'm not some of some of the younger people are are on the right path but you know well, most of them are I'm just saying him like I think the getting an article in Atlantic has stopped his mental growth like yeah he, yeah because he has a stake in it but I think that's any anyone that has like the nepotism like that they just think they deserve it you know what I mean like they yeah that's part of that's part of their privilege and that it's you know yeah. it's new to them so they they don't you know they think that they can just say whatever they want to say i guess yeah uh, and when what he did was very uh, he first talks his student uh, his fellow students and then he asked um like uh, so basically there was a a muslim who was um protesting on behalf of Palestine. And he asked him, like, do you support gay marriage? And he said, no, um, it's fine if he does not support gay marriage, but he has never discriminated against, he was a teacher's assistant. He has never discriminated against gay students. He's never, he just says, I wouldn't do it. Fine. Um, it hasn't, uh, uh, that's, um, but he like tried to bring these like side topics in to prove like to pinkwash Israel, even though gay marriage is not allowed in Israel. Yeah. Um, 
and then the like just putting the full name of all these students um that was just in the article allowing for people like canary mission to engage in threatening behavior against them and yes. all because and then he said that students should be like studying more in Stanford and not worrying about international issues. And here he is opining about the Soviet Union and not studying, like he described. What, told was, um, what was the school that the um, the woman was? They were at like the professor's house. Oh, that was uh, UC Berkeley. Okay, so yes. okay, that was so racist. Um, so his name is Terminsky. He's a dean of uh, the law school. And apparently every year he invites like the senior graduating class for breakfast or lunch or something in his house. And it, so, okay. So the thing is that if it's in his house and it's not a law school event and somebody acts weirdly, he needs to call the police. But he was threatening to call the student bar, the state bar for lack of professionalism. Therefore, it was a law school event. In that case, he doesn't have a right to like suppress her free speech if it's a law school event. Anyways, she didn't say anything. She did not mention Palestine at all. She said uh, she said a Ramadan greeting. And yes. then I think she was going to say this Ramadan, let's remember our brothers and sisters who are so... I think that was what she was going to say. But yes. right after she said the Ramadan greeting, the wife grabbed her by the yes. neck. And um, that that's really assault. It's like on video. Yep. And then they went to New York Times, like, like LA Times, and tried to paint themselves as the victim of this anti-Semitic student, but she did not mention, Pal she, she like the wife grabbed her by the neck before she could mention anything about Palestine. And my prediction was that she would, she, her speech was probably something like, let's remember our brothers and sisters in Palestine who are suffering. Like, I think exactly. that was the And then he he said something about, I can't remember the, the line that he says, but he goes, this is my house or, the, you know, I... And then he can't I, report I, them to the state bar, call the effing police. But he, of course, he won't call the effing police because um, uh, choking yeah. is much but, more... But he, he says that and then a comment I saw and it was like, oh, so they do recognize when people, have, you know, own property. <laughs> like, like, people have houses that are that are theirs. <laughs> like, yeah. Minus or... um, he, but then he tries, he's trying to have it both ways and it's so dishonest. You can't say it's a lot of law school event if you're going to report these students to the state bar yeah yeah and then there was the uh the what was it U usc where they they the valedictorian had had on a website like pro-palestinian but explaining if you know they went one state palestine that palestine if it was that then you know the jewish people and the muslims would live in peace you know like and that's what she had on this website and um, so they denied her valedictorian speech. And now because of all this, because they denied her to speak, they're not having any, they, they were having like this, um, a guy that is a filmmaker that graduated there was supposed to show up and they canceled him. And Billie Jean King was gonna be talking and she got canceled and- or she, wait, Did she cancel or did she get canceled? I, I think they just decided to cancel everything. She might have canceled. She's actually pretty decent. She's actually awesome. Um, yeah. She canceled on um, South Africa. Yeah, she she's she's always been pretty decent on. Martina um, Navratilova, on the other hand, not so much. No. No, no. no. USC cancels John M. Chu and Billie Jean King. Yeah, Martina Navratilova really uh, blocked me on Twitter. Um, um, uh, I, because she was making a turfy statement. Um, and I said, this sounds like, okay. And this is why she's also a shitty person. Um, the, the Czechoslovakian government paid for her tennis classes since she was like four. Tennis classes are expensive. Mm -hmm. And they asked her to pay like 20% uh, taxes for future. And it was like th that money was going to go for future tennis. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, like little kids were going to then learn tennis and follow in her footsteps. But she was such a, she's like, oh, no, not 20% taxes. Let me defect to the United States. And she defected. Um, but if you compare with Maria Sharapova, well, Maria Sharapova, basically the Russian government in, under extreme hardship paid for her to go study tennis or go train for tennis yeah. in um, Boca Raton, California. Mm -hmm. And she has um, been very grateful. She always says, I'm Russian. And uh, she pays all the taxes. or oh, she, she And she also, like, so it just kind of shows you how a sh shitty person Martina, but yeah. Um, yeah, but then she's a turf too. Yeah. 
<laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know. Well, oh, Billie Jean King. That's why. Uh, she, I, yeah, that's why I got off on my. I, 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 I brought up. I brought up. Brought up Billie Jean. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I saw her on. Um, Girl. But she says that I am the one. <laughs> and then the kid is not my son. <laughs> but um, no, I remember her on the um, the ancestry show. The the one that um, the guy from Harvard does. Uh, they go through and they do like your roots and stuff. And and they did uh, Billie Jean King. And I just remember she got ninety nine percent Western European. And she's like, oh, <laughs> she was so disappointed. <laughs> She was like, "Ah, oh, this isn't good." <laughs> yeah, that sounds like what I'd expect for somebody named Billie Jean King. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay, um, <laughs> but she yeah. was hoping for. She was hoping not to be, you know, like me, hundred percent white. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, she played tennis well, so um, uh, yeah, she's all right. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I just remember uh, um, Arthur Ashe and John McEnroe and Billie Jean King all refused to play in South Africa yeah. um, during apartheid. Yeah. And they all say that was the best decision they've ever made. Um, they gave up a lot of money, but they were like, no, we're not doing it. Yeah. That's how I, I it's weird because that's how I learned about like apartheid when I was like a teenager. Um when that was happening or I was even like kind of a young teenager, but I, like I could have been like preteen, but my mom was really into tennis. So, um, you know, like I just remember watching them and I remember that happening and me being like, Oh, what, what? I, I don't even know what that word means. Like I gotta like look up the word and stuff. Like I didn't know what was going on, but um, yeah, that's kind of what made me understand South Africa when I was young. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and um, uh, yeah, so, and those worked. Um, so um, people, I mean, Israel doesn't play that many sports, unfortunately, for this to actually make, make an impact. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, South Africans are good at, like, they're really good at cricket. Um, and so, yeah, uh, and rugby. You let you... You always watch cricket with your dad, right? Yeah, um, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, South Africa came very close twice. Um, the nineteen ninety nine um, semifinal, they lost to Australia by one run because they bloody panicked and uh, the the guy the the guy got run out. Um, it was so close. Um, they could have won that year. Um, so they came close, but always a bridesmaid, never a bride. <laughs> What's your favorite team? India, of course. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> yeah um so Dar daryl was right and stuff when we were talking about the uh fascism in florida he said in florida there are various latin american reactionaries gusanos yeah <laughs> many USSR. Oh, yeah. And the ussr defectors and indo uh, vietnamese um versions of gusano yeah, and um, my thread on Khamenei um, got the um, attention of a lot of um, uh, yeah Iranian gusanos, and I said, um, so this movie this person who does B movies or something was like, um, it's a slap into a face of all the Shah support. I'm like, I should uh, I didn't want to just want to slap you in the face. I want to punch you in the face. <laughs> but I didn't say that. I said, um, L.A. is like Miami for Iranian exiles. Is what I said. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, and um, the thing is that the U.S. has made lies about incubator babies and human shredders. So why am I going to believe like all, uh, their dumb stories about all the alleged executions in Iran? And um, most of Amnesty International's report of human rights abuses comes from Iranian courts, where they're actually taking the person to trial for performing those. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So when that happens, it means there is no impunity. They're actually trying to fix the problem. Yeah, they're yeah they're. They're not just allowing it. Like, yeah. you know, Israel just allows the so, idea. I mean, oh, that's just, yeah. It's, I'm, I'm just like so grossed out by the, like, why do they do that? Like, don't they understand how they um, look so gross, how, how, how they appear to the world? I don't know. There, there's like such this thought. And then like, and like, this was like, in my, in my trolling back days on Twitter, it's like, it's almost like you have to bully the bullies, but like, 
they just think it's like a good trait to have, like to be like this machismo, you know, and like this, I don't know, like chauvinistic bullshit. Like that looks good to people. No, because the people that, that only convinces the people that are already on your side and have the same horrible, you know, like you would think that they'd want to look like, no, but we're not doing anything wrong. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. try to be good about it, you know, but no, they, they are openly just posting crap they do and say, and yeah. And, and, you know, celebrating blowing things yeah, up. Why doesn't Israel take away their cell phones before they deploy them? Like Russia does that. And that's why you don't get Russian soldiers posting crap. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. So is there anything else you want to talk about? Um, no, I think uh, I, unless uh, I think we're good, unless the audience has something they want to say. Mm. Daryl just said, totally true. I mean, the U.S. population is basically what happens when you take all of the toxic, narcissistic, backwards, regressive parts of every society and put them in one place. Yeah, Busano Central. Um, yeah. Imperialism logic, there there isn't any or aren't any. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bless you. Yeah. <laughs> what are you having? Allergies there? Uh, I there's a, I don't know, something. Allergy or it's there's still snow, so maybe cold. I don't know. Ah. Ah. Yeah. It's do, you any, do you have any stories? Anything? Nope, no stories. Um, mm, unfortunately, I've been doing boring things like going to the library and that's it. Researching, yeah. And actually researching what you're supposed to be working on there? Yeah, and, <laughs> and, then, taking the, and then taking photos with rubber, with, with special gloves because um, they get mad um, if you use flash and then trying to read it and then translating it, yeah. That's neat though. How how old are the like? What are you getting into the Lenin stuff or older? No, I'm I'm getting into the uh, the the different workers party in the 1900s. Okay, yeah. So the early 1900s stuff. Yeah, but like before they established the Bolsheviks. Like um, so there was a few different things like the Bund, the and then the people don't understand, like don't understand the difference between the Bolsheviks and the Mensheviks. Um, and Mensheviks didn't really want a revolution. Um, they wanted to wait and help. And, and so most people don't understand it. And they say really stupid stuff like, um, they, they think Mensheviks would have done it without the civil. No, they would not have done a revolution. And the civil war was started by the whites. The, there would still be czars there. Yeah. Exactly. Um, there would be a czar there if they, yeah. if they didn't do what they did. Um, yeah. Like it, it, it's, I told you, um, we did an impromptu reading, uh, book reading of where, we're going on section three on Monday. So of what is, what is to be done. So it's, it's kind of neat, like reading that. Cause with like, we read part of it when we did the live with London stuff, but, um, and I read it myself, but just knowing like it's written in 1902. So it's prior to the break and yeah. Like reading it now, like me knowing who went Menshevik and who yeah. went. No, no, but, but, but read the one in 1903 of the notes on the party conference when Pekina like calls one of them, like it, the, one of the Mensheviks a horse's ass oh. in, out, uh, too loudly. Like Lenin writes like the, the reason for the split and he's like, Pekinov's <laughs> indiscretion. <laughs> Pekinov's, something about Pekinov's voice being too loud when he called somebody a horse's ass. I'll have to. I'll have to pay attention to that. In the 1903, like um, about the, uh, I think 1903, it's where he talks about what happened in the conference. Oh, okay. All right. He analyzes it, and um, yeah. So Flakonov makes somebody mad because he calls somebody. Uh, well, one of the groups let's speak after Flakonov. Uh, okay, Flakonov tries to whisper that he's a, this guy's a horse's ass, but he ends up being too loud and gets heard by that. Yeah. Are you on macro and cheese later, or did you already record it? I think I already recorded it and they're re-showing it. Yeah. Okay. So um, 
I don't no, know. No, no. But then I'm I'm talking with Virginia about doing the Lenin special series with them. Um, yeah, they're gonna do a they're gonna do a read. Oh, oh by the way, um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, by the way, there's going to be contact her because she. <laughs> oh, the, yeah. And um, I I might be traveling to Donbass soon, so that's why I can't commit just yet. But I'll figure oh, out. Oh, okay. Date. All right. All right. I'll let. Well, I'll well, let. Uh, once I know when I'm going to Donbass, I'll um, uh, it, it, uh, uh, um, I'll let you know. Like, I, I I do have internet in Donbass, but it's not power. Yeah. Nothing there is reliable. We'll, fi okay. we'll figure that out. Yeah, you're, they're they're doing what, like kind of almost a reading club or something. Like, a, yeah, they're doing a read through on some London stuff. So that'll exactly. be interesting. So, okay. Well, in that case, I'm gonna say bye. Bye. See you next week, and hopefully, we'll uh, have some more items for you guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs>